Hello, thank you very much for joining me here on my channel. Today I'm going to concentrate on working on a smaller abstract painting using watercolour inks and this is about increasing the amount of structure within a painting. Um, the previous painting that I did using the acrylic inks, the texture paste and plenty of water to move it about was quite a large piece and it's not necessarily something that we want to do each time. So using a smaller piece of paper and for these I'm using a slightly less um, piece than a four watercolour paper, we can actually start to play about with structure. For me, it doesn't matter what the painting is, whether it's a traditional landscape, a portrait, an abstract piece, it's got to have something that the eyes want to look at and to spend some time over. If it's just all very much the same, the eye moves over it very quickly and doesn't find any interest. So I wanted to show you about introducing structure using very simple lines and using that to build your painting on. It will create a very different finish than the abstract one that I showed you, but it's something that you can then play about with as well yourself to find what you like. So please enjoy this and don't forget to ask me any questions in the comments. I appreciate everybody's feedback enormously and I will see you at the end of this video just to finish off. To start us off, I'm using one of the uh, Micron Pigma pens in a sort of dark, sort of burnt sienna colour. And I will be using the Ecoline watercolour inks in a variety of blues, a yellow, and um, there's also some paint, some tube paint in burnt sienna, just to add a little bit of colour. So basically, I'm going to just draw a really random landscape shape. This is just soft lines, just to give me an outline to work to and something that gives a little form that we can start to add the paint to. And then using a nice flat brush with plenty of water on it, I'm just sweeping into some of the lines that we've done. Obviously, we need to wait for a few moments for the pen to dry. It is water fast, so we will find that it actually dries quite quickly and then we can actually start work. Flat brushes are great for this because you can use the edges and the flat part of the brush too. So here I've just applied clean, fresh water in the places that I want to work with. Now I'm adding the beautiful yellow Ecoline ink and look how it spreads into the water. It's like magic. It's really effective. I'm using quite a limited palette so the colours are going to run nicely together and I do want some blending and some mixing of colours when they do it by themselves rather than using a brush to do it. We'll do a little bit of a mixture. So it's already interesting looking. And now it's the famous tilt, jiggle it about, get those colours mixing, so effective. Obviously the yellow where it's mixing with the blue is creating this gorgeous green colour. You can, of course, choose whichever colours you like. Now just use the flat brush to pull that paint out a little bit. I've just got a wet flat brush and I'm just going to pull, soften those paints, make them spread nicely into different areas. Picking up, got that bit of turquoise coming through there. Such a lovely mix. You'll have your own favourite colours, I'm sure. And if you've done a splash practice, you'll know which colours work together and which are your preferred colours. Lovely soft turquoise there. The flat brush, like I said, pulls it along nicely sideways, but you can make a nice shape pulling downwards too. And I'm just using a slightly darker blue. This is the ultramarine. I'm just following roughly those lines. If we start off with the lighter colour, we can add more dark into it, obviously. If we start off too dark, we'll end up with areas that we might not want to have. A little bit of water spray just to help that to move about. Look how it just flows so beautifully. And now using a palette knife, which is one of my favourite things to do, because we've got texture in the paper, 
it will almost granulate as it moves and using the edge of the knife we can pull shapes and start to form some other lines. We've got quite a lot of horizontal lines but we now need some vertical adding in as well for balance. It's all about balance for me. For abstract work where you do something in one area I often find it's a good idea to do the same in a mirror image further on the page. It creates that balance and the eye seeks balance. Now I've just added in a little bit of the burnt sienna paint. Again, where it's mixing with colours it creates its own shades and by itself it creates warmth and adds a little bit of grounding colour. Don't forget to pull some shapes down. Use the edge of your brush, the side of your brush. I just love the colours that it creates. And you can stop and start where you want. It's a bit like doodling. There's no rules to say you shouldn't do that bit there or you should do this bit here. It's what you're looking for in the, the bit the picture that will guide you. This is fun. This is about playing. It's not about stressing. If it doesn't work, what have you lost at the end of the day? It's a piece of paper, a little bit of paint and some time. But what you will have learnt from it will help you with your next piece. So again, adding some more lines, moving that paint about. It's starting to look really interesting now. We've lost the, the boring flat horizontal lines and we're creating that little bit of depth. I love where the burnt sienna hits that turquoisey blue. It's made a really interesting bluey grey. I'm just going to soften this edge a little bit. It's dried, but with it being watercolour we can soften it a little. I just want to soften that down. It's a little bit harsh just where it's dried. Handy piece of tissue is always at my side. Kitchen roll, it's so absorbent. It's great for mopping up little mistakes. And I do have mistakes from time to time, as does everybody. The other day I managed to spill quite a lot of ink down my trousers because I shook the bottle and forgot that I'd actually taken the lid off. It was still inside the, the neck of the bottle. And it went everywhere. Now because I've got that burnt sienna higher up, I want to bring that down to give that, that warmth there. Using that smaller palette knife here, much easier for the detail. You can still use the edge to pull that along. And now scraping some of the paint out. I don't want it quite as intense there. I'm going to choose to soften that a little. Just with clean water and the flat brush. Just pull it down. And again, it gives another vertical line, but a very gentle one. So we've got the mirror shape to that vertical that's above it. Now I'm adding in another little bit of the darker blue. I just want to add some more depth. We've got some lovely light shades going on, but it needs a little bit more gravity. And that's what this colour will do now. So again, it's just go where the eye leads you. Mix it in if you want to mix it with other colours or keep it pure. It's decisions, decisions. I like to pull the thin lines down so that it breaks some of the horizontal lines that we've got going on. You don't always just want flat shapes. And 
the more you do this, the more it starts to make sense to the eye. I'm not very good on straight lines sometimes. You have to jiggle it a little bit to, to try and get that. If you were really bothered and you really wanted a straight line, you could just wait until the paint had dried and then use a ruler and a pen, fine pen, and use the, that to make the lines instead. I have done that as well. And it makes good addition. The, the straight lines contrast beautifully with the flowing nature of your abstract art. And again, a little bit more blue, adding that depth. Extending it now with a very fine rigger brush. Uh, it's great for pulling colour out, making fine lines, even just dropping good pure colour in sometimes. And now I'm working with the indigo blue shade here, which is the next darker after the ultramarine. Just pull that down a little bit, encourage it to move, following that little line that I've got coming down. Get a bit of a, a tilt to get the, the movement, and then you can help it with the brush again. I love where the blue and the burnt sienna are together, that's made an absolutely gorgeous dark brown. Again, using the fine liner, you can neaten up some lines. Now, what we have here after it's dried is what we would call a liminal space. It is a, a negative space, which actually you could keep if you wished. It wouldn't be of any harm, but I'm going to add a little bit more detail. This is with a slightly darker brown micron pen and I'm just going to fill in some of that area just adding again random lines as we did at the beginning there's a few more straighter lines coming in now just to highlight the the straights that we've got the verticals and the horizontals and just pulling the shape down filling that page up a little bit more and adding a bit more interest for the eyes to look at again if you wanted to do this with a ruler you could do but I prefer at this point just to do it very, very loosely, almost sketch-like, a little bit of line and wash type effect. Yeah, pleased with those. I like the sort of triangle that points up from the yellow. It looks a bit like a church spire. And I like most of it, but I'm going to add a little darker in that spot to the right. So again, pulling across with a little bit more of the pen evening out some shapes and now going in with some of that beautiful golden yellow mixed with a little bit of the burnt umber uh, sorry burnt sienna it makes such a lovely warmth without losing the yellow that's underneath and now just going to wet the brush again and pull that out just mix it along and then pull it up so that it's pointing the eye towards the colour at the top. It's all about leading the eye, helping it to find it where it wants to look. And now this is the dark blue again into the yellow. But I'm just going to go in with the fine rigger and again pull some of that across into those colours. I don't want this to be too heavy though. So I'm going to just take that out. You can see the colour is still there, but now with some clean water I can soften that so it gives it a slightly misty appearance. And I quite like that compared to all the harsh lines that we've got and the, the strong colours going on. As long as you wet it straight away you will lose quite a lot of the colour, but if you leave it too long it will stain quite well. I've just wet that area now. I'm just now going to add in some more of the lovely burnt sienna. And just a question of pop some more paint and bring that. It creates a glaze across the colours below because they're dry. So you can still see the different colours through that glaze. 
but they create their own colours as well. And what's going down will also go up. So I just add that little bit of height there as well. Not in direct line, so you've broken that line, but it just adds a little bit more. Now I'm going to add some dark blue over this green. So I've just added some wet with the nice flat brush and now it's the indigo blue. Drop that in and do some tilting to get that movement. You can encourage it with your brush, it's not a problem. Again, I'm not very straight with these lines. I'm not too bothered. This is practicing. And we can straighten this up in a moment. And I'll show you how. And using the edge of the brush this time, so it's nice and flat, relatively straight. But again, not too worried. If I wanted it dead straight, I would have drawn the lines first and basically coloured it in. But we're, we're practising being intuitive with this, so it doesn't matter. It's what makes the piece interesting. And I also feel that it needs a little something there. So that's actually come out as a small glaze, but I'm going to put some more deep indigo into that. Taking that right the way up, again balancing those lines, the verticals and the horizontals and bringing it down at the other side. Where it hits wet paint it will make a colour and blur, where it hits dry it will be a straight line-ish. So many beautiful shades that it just creates all by itself. Now it's just a question of adding in with that flat brush those little bits of darker paint to give the depth and interest. Still keeping with the horizontal and the vertical images. If you place a dark shade over the top it pushes everything back. In the distance everything is a lot paler so if you add a darker colour at the front it pushes everything back and gives different dimensions within your painting really. So now we could be looking through windows or scaffolding or just other objects, looking at something in the distance. So yeah, I'm pleased with this. This is looking really good and I will let this dry and then I will give it another reassess and it may be that I go in with a little bit of metallics but I like it, it's good. I hope you really enjoyed watching that and that you can see now that abstract does not have to be wild, woolly and just sort of ephemeral shapes and colours. You can actually add form, texture, shape using lines and colour. Again, thank you so much for joining me. Please don't forget to hit the usual buttons at the end if you've enjoyed this. I'll catch up with you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.